All right, so this is going to be the fourth installment in the introduction to pipe band side drumming. If you look at the upload dates, there's a bit of a gap. Sorry about that. Um, now that I'm making these videos public, if you have questions or comments that are you know, above the usual YouTube comment quality, please feel free to leave those. I'll answer them the best I can. All right, as I alluded to earlier, this is going to be focused primarily on buzzes, buzz rolls, and actually getting to numbered rolls that we're going to use in virtually all of the music. So, what we finished up with last was working on paradiddles and triples, and including the triplet in that. So what we're going to start off with now is actually the buzzes, finally. So, as discussed earlier, pretty much any time we contact the pad, it's going to consist of a tap, multiple taps, or a buzz. In this case, we're going to actually dissect the buzz just a little bit because getting to this type of roll, it's a little bit harder than you would initially think, and mostly what contributes to getting there is not as straightforward as you would think. Even though it looks like it's really fast, and I guess in some ways it is one of the fastest, most complicated things side drummers do, it's one of the easiest because it's in fact slower movements that get us there. So, when we're going to dissect the individual buzz, what we're trying to achieve is get as many contacts with the practice pad as possible, with a couple of caveats, and then how we're going to do that is what we're going to start going over. So, what we want out of that buzz is we want it to be as close as possible, just a continuous zzz noise, hence buzz rolls. Once again, everything in drumming is onomatopoeic. So one of the first things that we don't want to have is a tap buzz, and that basically results when we have a tap into a buzz. And another thing that we don't want, especially when we're looking at the continuous case for rolls, is to have gaps in between there. So that's not really a continuous roll. We want that roll to be able to spill over from hand to hand. So we'll start off with a slightly different approach to creating the buzz that'll let us get there. So for the buzz, in the exact same way that we prepared holding on to the stick, once again, we have the stick kind of lined up in here. What we're going to do is after setting the stick down on the pad, we're just going to pick it up. And from this position, this is the reset position where we're ready to either make a tap or a double or a buzz. So from here, if we just bring the stick down with our arms, we're going to get some bounces. And if we keep it down there, it'll kind of bounce until it runs out of energy which is useful, but if we want a buzz, and especially want to avoid a tap buzz, we're going to actually have to put a little bit of squeeze effort to get it to stay pinned down there at first. So what we're going to do is when we're at that reset position with these fingers, we're going to put a little bit of pressure down on the stick, not a whole lot, just enough that you can actually feel it on the underside of your hand. And what we're going to try and do at first is just set this pressure and leave it. Eventually this will become what we call the preload pressure, so that's pressure you're applying to the stick before it touches the pad or the drum. So with that preload pressure applied, we bring it down, and we should end up with not a tap buzz, but also a buzz that kind of runs out quickly. But this simple buzz is actually excellent, and we will use this a lot later on. But right now, that's a buzz that kind of extinguishes itself pretty quickly. On the left hand, we're going to be basically looking to do the exact same thing. So, from the exact same technique setup, here, barking dog, set up alongside, we're going to want to do the same thing where we pick the stick up, and if we let go of it, it would bounce freely. But if instead we add a little bit of pressure, and once again, just enough pressure that we can feel that pressure is being applied, but no more, and then drop the arm in, we'll have a buzz that extinguishes itself pretty quickly. But what we want to end up with is anything but a tap buzz right now. So if it buzzes and extinguishes quickly, perfect, we're on the right track. So that's a buzz, and the amount of pressure we have applied, if we end up with a tap buzz here, or there's a distinct kind of gap, 
or openness. That just means we need to add a little bit more pressure. But obviously there are some limits because if you're really squeezing it too hard, not only are you tensing up your hand, but buzzes of that quality are not immediately useful. All right, so now comes really the tricky and impressive thing to building buzz rolls that you can turn into continuous and smooth buzz rolls, and it's that after we've gone through all of that setup and added some preload, instead of a buzz that kind of runs out really quickly, what we're instead going to do is actually have two different levels of squeeze pressure. The first is this preload pressure that we have on the stick before we come down, and the second one is going to be what we call the sustain pressure, basically if we can start off just enough to trap it and not let it do a tap buzz, if we start off with that squeeze, but then let the pressure off, we end up with a nice long buzz. And that gives us a lot more time to, with the other hand, if it's doing the same thing, so preload, But that now gives us time to reset the other hand when we get to the continuous buzz case. So the way we actually come from this preload pressure is once we have that applied, we're going to go through just like we've done before, but the moment we can actually feel through fingertips that the stick has touched the pad or drum and we feel that buzzing vibration, then we're going to relax. I'm really over exaggerating, so if you see my fingers come off, that's not actually necessarily what we're trying to do. That's just me trying to visualize that I've taken that pressure off and relaxed my hand. But as soon as we feel that buzz pressure, we're going to relax our hand to that lighter sustained pressure, and then the stick will keep bouncing, and it'll look hopefully like this. On the left hand, same thing. Especially here, we'll be able to feel the stick starting to vibrate through the thumb. So, if you have that, just work on that one, because that's really all that we have to do to start making these buzz rolls work. And then the last thing is, as we start building these buzzes and putting them together, what you're going to instinctively want to do is pick up the stick while it's still buzzing. And that's not in its own way a bad thing, but if what we're trying to do is get as many buzzes out of the stick as possible, we're kind of leaving some quality buzzes on the table if the stick still has bounce energy. So don't be afraid of running the stick completely out of buzz. That's actually a good thing. So from here, the thing to work on is just going to be some slow, deliberate buzzes. And then the last thing to focus on is after we've ran that completely out of buzz, to use as little effort as possible to get back to this reset position. So it'll just be buzz, buzz. On one hand, it's just going to be buzz, reset, buzz, reset, buzz, reset, buzz, reset. And now we're just going to offset those. So while the right hand is buzzing, the left hand is resetting, and vice versa. So buzz, reset, reset, buzz, buzz, reset, buzz, reset, buzz, reset, buzz, reset, buzz. Reset, buzz, reset, buzz. So we can shake that out just a little bit, and now we're going to start working towards numbered buzzes. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to actually start off with just little threes of buzzes. So what we're going to start off with is a buzz to a buzz to a buzz. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz, buzz. We can switch this over to the left hand now. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Now the unique thing about the Scottish drumming is we never have a buzz that does not end with a distinct lone tap that comes at the end. So in this case, what we're going to play is three buzzes and then the tap at the end, and this is how we build a seven stroke roll. If you count it, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it will sound like this, buzz, 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 tap, buzz, 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 tap. Now we switch this over to the left hand, the tap will come on the right. Buzz, 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 tap. Buzz, 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 tap. 
So, once again, with that same building block of the little trio of buzzes, we can actually take two of those, stick them together, and toss a tap on the end of that. Buzz, 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 tap, and uh, two, and uh, buzz, 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 tap. So if we count the buzzes on this one, we end up getting two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. And these thirteen-stroke rolls are, in a lot of ways, the basis of a lot of the entry level, even through intermediate scores, because more often than not, if you count those as 16th note triplets, they fill one beat with buzz, 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 tap. And it's as simple as that. The seven stroke rolls are half that length, so those would usually just be eighth note rolls. Buzz, 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 tap, and uh, buzz, 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 tap. So, for right now, those are really the roles to focus on because those are going to be the most common roles we play because we use a lot of triplet-based roles, and those are fairly simple. The last one I'll touch on, and hopefully this video is not too far over length, is going to be a special length roll, which is a 25-stroke roll. Um, if you want to do a little bit of mental math, you can figure it out why it's a 25-stroke roll, but essentially, if you take my word for it, it's just four buzz triplets and a tap. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tap. I'll just count out the triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Tap. Well, if we go a little bit quicker, I'll just count. One and a two and a three and a four and a tap. You can even count it as what the actual underlying beats would be, as I alluded to, if these are sixteenth note triplets. One and two and tap. And again and one and two and. Now, if that's starting to sound a little bit familiar, bagpipes, by their nature, don't immediately start up. So they need the opportunity to, even if they have air in the bags, be able to start up the three drones that are up along their shoulder, get that started, and then get their hands to the practice chanter. And that takes about two beats to do. And, as with most marching bands, the cue usually goes out to the drummers to start it off. And typically how that works is that the drum section will, see, will receive a call from the drum major or pipe major to play the roles that lead into the tune. This will usually come with a marching command, but if you're static, you'll just hear by and by the rolls. One, two. Now the pipers come up here. And that's where they would start into the tune. So those 25 stroke rolls or three pace rolls are the last roll you really critically need before you start getting into music. So thank you again for your time. Good luck.